Hi there. My name is Sarah Zykowski. I'm a dietitian at University of Michigan in the Gastroenterology and the Hepatology Clinic, and I'm here today to talk to you about the benefits of capsaicin. Capsaicin is a spice of the vanilloid family, known for its pain relieving qualities, and it is among the most widespread spices being used in cuisines throughout the world. It is very commonly used in Asian and Latin American food. The average daily chili pepper consumption by people who live in Asia is 2.5 to 8 grams. That's 10 to 300 times higher than people who live in Europe and North America. It is found in all types of peppers, but in higher concentrations and specific ones. The Carolina Reaper is the hottest pepper in the world. It has the most capsaicin, followed by ghost peppers, habaneros, cayenne, Tabasco, serrano, jalapeno, and poblanos. There is a comprehensive body of evidence suggesting several benefits of capsaicin. Some of those are in include uh, anti-inflammatory benefits, antioxidant, car anti-carcinogenic, metabolic, and cardioprotective effects, although it is often avoided because there's many reported, reported digestive side effects. Capsaicin does not actually cause any chemical burn or any direct tissue damage at all from exposure to chili peppers. The inflammation resulting from exposure to capsaicin is believed to be the result of the body's reaction to nerve excitement. In IBS, acute chili ingestion may sometimes increase abdominal burning, pain, and discomfort, as well as increased rectal sensitivity. However, research showed that continuing to consume the peppers can desensitize those nerves, leading to less sensitivity to this pain, burning over time, as well as pain from other stimuli in the digestive tract. This shows potential benefits of capsaicin also for visceral hypersensitivity conditions. The therapeutic role of capsaicin in functional dyspepsia, IBS, and GERD is currently evolving and requires more research. Diets enriched with capsaicin have been proven to increase gut bacteria abundance. It has also been shown to inhibit pathogenic bacteria growth by exhibiting bactericidal effects. However, the mechanisms for this process are still not completely clear. Foods with capsaicin are among the most avoided foods in patients with irritable bowel disease, so those with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis most commonly. However, there is no direct evidence that capsaicin makes irritable bowel disease symptoms worse, and it could potentially improve symptomatology, although more research needs to be done in this area. Capsaicin enables efficient digestion and absorption during high-fat food intake. With this process, it can also help to prevent accumulation of absorbed fat. There's early evidence showing capsaicin consumption may assist in lowering serum cholesterol levels, as well as enhanced absorption of micronutrients such as calcium and zinc and iron to a lesser degree. Much more experimental trials though are needed to be done before providing optimal, optimal dosage of capsaicin. However, adding peppers with capsaicin to your food is safe and may lend to many gastrointestinal benefits that I previously discussed. And you don't have to add any large amounts of capsaicin to your diet in order to have benefits. And there's not research indicating that large amounts provide a lar larger benefit. So there's many ways to start gradually increasing capsaicin in your diet. Um, red chili flakes or cayenne are spices that you can keep in your spice cabinet for easy access and use. So here's some red pepper. It comes, it's like a powder um, ground up dehydrated and ground up red pepper. Um, and then we have crushed red pepper, so like some flakes. Um, you might see these often at like a pizza store, so, and people add them to their pizza. Um, so it comes in little flakes, and you can add just as much or as little as you would desire to your food. You can add it to curry, stir fries, you know, salads, anything that, that sounds good. You can start with just a small amount and gradually increase. That would be the recommended way to start adding. Um, you can you can always add more, but you can't take it out, so you don't want to ruin a dish, um, especially if it if it's unbearably spicy. Um, 
but you can also add like whole peppers and start adding those to your foods. So I have here, I have um, a jalapeno pepper and a serrano pepper. Um, these are some different options to make them a little bit less spicy. You can remove the seeds. So there's usually a little strand of fiber in the, in the inside that has like all the seeds attached to it. So you can remove that either by flaking them out or with, um, you know, running it under water or something like that would be an option. Um, and you don't have to add the whole pepper, so you can just add part of it if you wanted. Um, you, if you were going to start with peppers, you might want to start with like poblano, jalapeno, and serrano with our, with that are the more mild ones. And then as you get used to it and it becomes more tolerable, tolerable if you enjoy it, then you could work up to spicier ones. Um, if you find that you enjoy consuming the hot peppers, you could even grow them outside during the warmer months. This makes it a lot easier to, you know, grab from outside and cook with them um, more readily and ha or having them more readily available. You can also then dry them or dehydrate them for use in the wintertime and save them in a jar or a container. So there's many options for adding uh, capsaicin into your diet and hopefully we'll learn many more benefits or more concrete benefits of it in the future. Thanks for coming.